So good evening, everyone. My name is Michael, K-E-A-A-Q-W, and I'm here with Roger, N3GE, and J-K-Y-9-I on behalf of Willie, OE1WKL, the maker of the Morserino. He wasn't able to join us tonight because of the time difference, but asked us uh, from the Long Island CW Club to represent him tonight and share with all of you his um, uh, product and creation. So I have some slides to share and then Roger's gonna do some neat demo and Jay's here to help us out as well because he was one of the first people who told us about the thing. So um, just one second while I share my screen. There we go. So um, this is Willie's presentation. Um, a little about Willie. Oh, this is neat. Okay, there we go. Um, so Willie was born in 1951 in Linz, Austria. Uh, he's married, father of two girls, has four grandkids, was first licensed in 1967 as OE5WKL. And uh, actually in 2021, he took the US Amateur Extra Class license and is licensed as KD6KW. Uh, he currently lives in Vienna and uh, studied at the University of Vienna, as well as the University College Dublin. Um, he's actually a comparative linguistics, uh, PhD in Celtic studies in Old Irish and self-taught programmer. Uh, he's also worked professionally as an IT auditor and global IT security officer. Um, what else? Uh, in 2013, he retired and became more active in amateur radio and is a member of the OEVSV, uh, which is an Austrian National Amateur Radio Society. And he's also part of a group called Metafunk, which is the makerspace. Outside of ham radio, his hobbies are painting, photography, and music. So a little about Metafunk. Metafunk is a hackerspace uh, in Vienna that he's joined, and that's where he first uh, developed the uh, Morserino and the concept. So how it began back in uh, 2017, uh, part of MetaLab, which is that uh, same as Metafunk, um, they were planning a uh, maker fair. Uh, and so this is the back of a napkin sort of schematic that they made to make an Arduino based uh, Morris keyer. And they're trying to think of names for it. So they kind of settled on the Meta Morserino, Meta for Meta Lab, Morris for Morse code, and Arduino uh, is the microcontroller. So Meta Morserino is how they came up with that name. Uh, here's some neat pictures of the prototypes. You can see on the left the um, breadboard and the Arduino. It looks like a mega, and they have an LCD screen and a potentiometer there and a touch paddle um, in the breadboard and on the right is a more, uh, I guess, refined version uh, on some other uh, perf board. Um, so they had the first working prototype within a month and Harold OE3HVS uh, was the designer of the PCB and prepared some kits and they were wondering how much they should order. So uh, they just decided to do uh, 20 kits to start with. Um, they features on that were an iambic keyer, a CW generator, and also a CW decoder, uh, but it only uh, was able to decode a straight key um, and hardware for inputting audio was an optional add-on. So here's the picture of the kit. You can see the 3D printed uh, case um, and they used a smaller Arduino chip and the speaker is in the top and as well as a LCD display. Um, so down here, uh, this is a workshop they held with the first 20 kits. Uh, they had 10 participants, not all of them are hams. They're just people from the maker space who are interested in learning about this. And they sold all 20 kits uh, that first day. And then with a few, within a few months, they've sold 100 kits. And so, uh, they realized that this was never meant for production. So then they started uh, revising it 
to make it better. Um, Willie uh, met with uh, Gerhard uh, OE6 RDD from the CW School Gratz, which is another uh, uh, ham radio group. Um, and they just demonstrated the meta more Sereno to them. Um, he liked it, uh, but said that in order to be a useful educational device, it needed a lot more features. And it quickly became apparent that the Arduino would not be powerful enough to accomplish that. They needed more uh, memory uh, specifically. So um, between July 2017 and January 2018, uh, they're looking for a suitable hardware platform and they finally found this uh, Helltech module, uh, which was made uh, in China. It has a ESP32 32-bit uh, 32 processor with lots of memory. It has an OLED display. Um, it also has Wi-Fi, LoRa, which is low power, uh, low range, communication, I believe Laura stands for, and uh, Bluetooth uh, built into it. And it's also programmable through the Arduino uh, environment. Um, so between January 2018 and May 2018, they were able to make their first prototype on a breadboard. Uh, they ported over the existing code uh, from the Meta Morserino into this new platform, and they added a couple features, including an echo trainer where it will send you a word and then you have to send it back uh, properly. And then once you do that, it'll send you another word. So you learn by, um, you listen and then repeat it back to it. Um, the LoRa transceiver is also kind of neat because it allows you to send Morse code from one uh, Morse Reno to another Morse Reno over uh, the air uh, through radio waves on a UHF frequency. Um, they found it very useful for the CW school grats and uh, they designed a first version PCB and most of the parts were surface mount. So here is that first prototype. Um, you can see here uh, where my cursor is, this is the Helltech module. It has a very tiny OLED display, but right here, this is where some touch paddles plug in. Here is where you can plug in an external paddle. You got your speaker and you got your two um, button controls. Here's an on-off switch in the back, uh, jack for a uh, headphones, and I believe uh, another jack to maybe go to a radio or something um, to be used as a keyer. So in June of 2018, they showed the prototype at the ham radio fair in uh, Friday, oh, <laughs> Friedrich Schaffen, uh, Germany, uh, excuse my pronunciation, um, and Gerhard uh, OE6RDD and Matt OE6FEG and M0FEU demonstrated the Morserino 32 uh, during a presentation and um, the auditorium was uh, too small for the interest. You can see it's uh, overpacked with people there in this bottom right image. <laughs> So then between uh, July and October, uh, they were preparing the final version of the kit. Um, they also included the audio input hardware that was optional on that first uh, design. The CW School Grats uh, got some prototypes and provided a lot of useful feedback. So in September, they made some changes uh, to the module and some pinout changes. Um, and then they were back to the drawing board. They're trying to decide to keep going or cancel, and they finally decided to uh, move on and they redesigned the PCB. Uh, so the way this uh, project got uh, its uh, starts is they had a Kickstarter campaign, and uh, they wanted to make about 100 to 150. Um, so they used Kickstarter, and their financial goal was 6,000 euros to produce 120 kits. On October 24th at 15, uh, 1700 hours, uh, the campaign went live and two hours later they had reached their goal. And by the end of the campaign on November 6th, they had over 18,000 euros pledged. And so they ordered uh, 550 PCBs and parts for uh, 350 kits. Um, at that point, uh, they had just shipped their first kits before Christmas 
And by the end of February, all the Kickstarter uh, backers and some early supporters in Austria got their kits, about 350 together in total. And he thought he might be able to sell all 500 kits within the year. Um, so in 2020, uh, he actually had to find a new manufacturer. The loudspeaker wasn't being made anymore and uh, he had to find a replacement and the Helltech also changed their pinouts for their modules. So um, he decided to redesign the board um, and uh, to, in order to keep the firmware compatibility, uh, he had to um, determine at startup on which module it was running. So he actually had code uh, in there to say, is it the old firm, uh, old hardware, the new hardware? Um, but they were able to do that. So now whenever, if someone has an old version and they update the firmware to the, the latest, it'll still function. And then all the new kits with this new board layout automatically come with the latest firmware. Um, so there were no more Serenos uh, being sent out between October and December of 2020. And he started sales again around Christmas 2020 with the first new edition being shipped in January. And uh, here's a page about the metrics of the sales. Uh, Christmas of 2019, they'd sold uh, 1,500. By Christmas 2020, they sold 2,800. And then by 2021 Christmas, they sold 5,100. So uh, demand is increasing rapidly. Uh, he says about half the kits are sold in the USA. Uh, he's also sold quite a few to Germany, Austria, UK, and Switzerland, uh, and total 50 countries. So he's, it's getting uh, really well known, and most of that's all by word of mouth. Uh, groups like this group, um, Long Island CW Club. Uh, there's also a groups IO page, Facebook groups. So lots of people are spreading the word about this neat tool. Um, this is a picture of his workbench. Uh, he assembles all the kits and sends them out himself. I believe he said he's sending out maybe like 40 kits a month or so. Um, so it's keeping him very busy. Um, and this is a picture here of the final version now that he is being sold. You'll notice the plexiglass uh, cover. This uh, long black antenna is for the LoRa UHF transmitter. Um, the Wi-Fi antenna is actually this little spring here on the Helltech module. Um, it's based on the ESP32 microcontroller, hence the Morserino32 name. Um, you can either power it through the USB uh, mini uh, port on the Helltech module, or it uh, has um, a connector for a battery that you can put on the bottom from like a cell phone or a RC toy or something like that. Um, the kit's simple to build, about one hour. Most of the parts are already on the board as surface mounts. So all you have left to do is these two buttons, these three or four jacks on the back side, um, the speaker, the battery terminals, and then the, um, the header pins for the Helltech module and this potentiometer here. Uh, it's a suitable for a first kit for newcomers and ideal project for clubs. Uh, the software started in uh, C or C++ and there's over 500, or sorry, 5,000 lines of code. And soft, software updates come a few times a year and can be done over Wi-Fi or via USB. Um, the source code is on GitHub and schematics and instructions and user manuals are also there. So to tell you more about what it does, um, it has a lot of different functionality, which would be great for uh, Morse code learners. Um, the first one is it's a standard CW keyer. So if you're using paddles or, uh, yeah, paddles, um, you can, uh, it'll do iambic A and B or ultimatic. It also supports straight keys and then subsequently uh, bugs and QD keys, other mechanical keys. Uh, it also has a CW decoder, so you can take the audio from your radio and plug it into the Morserino and it will decode um, audio coming in as well as audio or code that's being um, keyed on the either the touch paddles or on an external paddle that you plug in. Um, it also has a CW generator, 
So it can play random characters, words, abbreviations, or words from a supplied file, which you can upload through Wi-Fi. So that's great for anyone trying to learn the code. Uh, they can upload their own test uh, sets that they can practice with. Uh, the echo trainer, which I already uh, described a little bit, where it will send you a word and then you send it back, uh, is a great way to train your fist uh, to become proficient at sending as well as um, hearing what is uh, being sent to you. Uh, it also has a CW trainer using the Koch methodology. Um, there's three different sequences uploaded into it. Um, the CW Academy sequence, uh, the Learn CW Online sequence, and then the Just Learn Morse code sequence. So each of those groups has a slightly different letter order that they um, teach uh, Morse code to beginners with. And so all three are now in the uh, Morse Reno. Um, items generated uh, for I, example, the Echo Trainer uh, use only the characters learned so far. So it'll only send you words that use those letters that you know. And then the really cool features, uh, in my opinion, are the, uh, the different transceiver modes. So as I mentioned, it has a LoRa transmitter, which will send um, the Morse characters on uh, UHF frequency in the 430 megahertz spectrum. And that can be used up to maybe 100 yards away or so. Perfect for like if you're all in the library together or whatever. Um, it also has Wi-Fi. So if you have more than one Morserino on a home Wi-Fi network, it can communicate Morserino to Morserino. Um, there's also a couple website servers that you can connect your Morserino to through the internet. And uh, one of them is a kind of like a repeater of sorts. So if anyone who's logged in to that with their Morserino, you can communicate round robin style. Uh, there's another uh, site that is made by a ham we know, um, John, I don't remember his call sign at the moment, but he made a great uh, QSO bot, it's called, where uh, you can basically have a practice conversation with a um, computer program. And uh, that's a little less stressful than uh, trying to have a conversation on the air. And um, I think other people have made some stuff in the past as well. Um, and then lastly, uh, more Serenos audio input and output uh, through a computer. Uh, it has a mode ICW. And so some people use the more Sereno uh, in that way to also communicate over the internet to send um, uh, Morse code to each other. So um, any questions on this part of the presentation? I'd like to ask anybody who's got uh, wants to speak to use the raise the hand function. It's on your uh, Zoom down at the bottom right hand side for, for reactions. You can raise your hand or you can put questions in the chat. Go ahead, Oscar. Yeah, thank you. What is the cost of it and how, how much time it takes to get it into, into the US? I mean, into your hand by mail. Um, Roger, do you want to take that? I believe it's close to $100 US. And um, if you go with standard shipping, it could take maybe three weeks, but there's a DHL option for faster shipping, but it's, also costs a little more. Yeah, we, we lost you there for a moment, Mike. You might repeat it. Oh, sure. Um, it's roughly $100 uh, US, and uh, it'll take a few, three weeks or so via normal. Uh, postage, but you can, there's a DHL option for faster shipping at a higher cost. And you said that it comes already with the case, so make it easy. Uh, once you put it together, you put it into the acrylic kit case and it's ready to get it working. Uh, the acrylic comes with the kit. It looks uh, very nice. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, Oscar, have a, a, a case per se. It's got an acrylic top and an acrylic bottom. Okay, that connects together and it gives you a nice function that protects the board. But there are some 3D printed cases that will allow it to drop in real nice. Also, uh, there's a couple of us in the Long Island CW Club. If you have a ham who can't solder, maybe because of age or disability or whatever, we'll build it for him. Okay, uh, we carry a couple of them in stock. 
and we'll put them together. Okay. I don't see any more hands raised. I didn't see Oscar's raised. I missed that. Oh, here's one. Patrick, go ahead. Hi, I um, just finished my kit, my kit um, a couple weeks ago, actually. And a uh, question, so I'm um, in the process of learning the characters and in the Koch mode, it, it allows me to do kind of one character at a time. Is there a way to preload sets if I wanted to do, you know, like I'm, I'm up to, you know, 16 characters now. So I wanted to, to focus on the ones that I've already put in there. Is there a way to do that other than just going one at a time that you guys know? Did you want to take that, Roger? Yeah, uh, you can uh, download uh, off the um, off your computer, uh, different verbiage and all. Uh, Patrick, is your uh, email address correct on uh, QRZ? Correct, yeah. Okay, I've got a series. I got Whiskey, Nine, Papa, Delta, Sierra, Patrick. What I'll do is uh, first thing in the morning, I'll send you out a stack of what I call white papers. And what they are is they kind of simplify the instructions and maybe they'll help you through it. If that doesn't help, you've got my email address off QRZ. You can come back to me, N3GE, or you can pick us up on Sundays, Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, uh, Long Island CW Club. We have a more Serena group and we actually demonstrate each of these. We'll walk you through it right from scratch if you need to. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. And it, it's been awesome. It, it's um, I use it all the time. I have it next to my desk at work, and in between meetings, I just go to town. So it, it's been great. Can you uh, uh, put some of that information into the chat for people that tune in to YouTube or whatever? Uh, Dan, it, there are so many of them. It's a little bit difficult. Uh, anybody who's a member of the Long Island CW Club, you can go to the Dropbox. And it's a Morserino number 19 Dropbox. And I have all the white papers in that Dropbox. Okay. Under Long Island CW Club. Uh, there's probably six or eight or 10 of them. Okay. Okay. So, good. so also, after we get done here, can you send me the presentation? Email me your presentation you did tonight. Sure Whoop. thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Super. Uh, any more questions? Okay. So, um, David WHGM put yes. a question in the chat asking if the instructions are also in the manual. Uh, the answer is yes, and there's even some YouTube videos, I believe, that people have made um, which are useful, uh, but the white papers that Roger has put together are just kind of little cheat sheets for people who have trouble finding stuff they're looking for in the manual. And I wanted to mention um, uh, John's call sign who made the QSO bot is, um, M0STQ for anyone who wanted to know. I think one thing I'd emphasize that, uh, and I, I'm not sure it's really, our club uses it as much uh, lately. Maybe maybe uh, uh, it's not true, but when we first got started with this, what I found most useful about it was that, um, that when we connected to the server with the Wi-Fi uh, TRX, uh, you had a, a a perfect um, space to send and receive in which the audio quality was 100% crystal clear. You know, you weren't on HF, you didn't have any QSB, no QRM, no QRN. And, uh, and if it's just two of you that are on there, then you really get a, a, a pretty special practice space to do a QSO or just a rag chew. And, uh, and you could do that even, um, you know, if the servers, I think one of them is in, Aust in Austria, and uh, but it's it just sounds like you're right in you know next door. Um, I can remember um, doing QSOs with um, uh, shoot, what's the fellow that we've got in Thailand? Uh, Supat. Supat in Thailand. I mean, it's it's a pretty amazing feature. I, I really think Morphus should get back to trying that and doing that on a schedule. I mean, I know they try to, but somehow it seems like it doesn't get done enough. But that's something that I, I find to be uh, when they, that wasn't a, that was not part of the original uh, M32, and when that came out, I was just like, "Wow, this thing is just getting more interesting with each iteration." Roger, would you like to give your um, portion of the presentation? 
Yep, let's get it started here. Okay, uh, mine should be the live presentation if I can find it here. <laughs> Everybody see it okay? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to stop it, come back in, and try something different here. Wait a minute. If you saw it, I didn't like that. Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> Share a screen. I'm going to change the sound settings here. Wait a minute. That should make it better. And okay, uh, you can hear me okay. You can see it. Uh, what I'm going to deal with is the product, okay? And I've got a series of small videos that I put together. Uh, most of them are already up on YouTube and on the, the in the Dropbox. But uh, what we'll do is we'll walk through this unit and uh, see how it works. So first part of it is the kit. Um, the, the kit is fantastic. Uh, you know Willie does each kit. So if there's a mistake, and occasionally there is, Willie quickly takes care of it and gets you the part out that you need. Um, it's all prepackaged. The instructions are excellent. Um, they're a little bit overwritten. That's why I do a lot of white papers. I'm an, a mechanical engineer, so I like to simplify it. If it's not ABC, I have trouble with it. But, they, but it's very good instructions for assembly and for operations, and there's the kit itself. There's what the unit looks like. Michael did a good job of presenting what it, what it did. But as you picture it there, right now I've got Select Modus CW keyer, and I can walk that off the Helltech and do a whole a bunch of different cycles. And we're going to do that here in a few seconds. If you look at the bottom of it, you'll see those little paddles. The paddles look like this. Okay. And they come with the unit, and they work very well. In fact, they work extremely well. But you can also operate it with your paddle your own paddles or your straight key and uh, make it work for you a um, lot of different settings let's start walking our way through it uh, here's one that I put together uh, this week and basically just shows you how the Morserino's primary purpose as far as I'm concerned is not hearing the uh, the code because you can go to the computer all day long and listen to code all different kinds of programs it's the matter of getting your fist proper. And being from Austria, Willie's got it so it's a taskmaster. It's a tough one. And if you don't key in just right, okay, it doesn't work. So let's see how it works here. The Morserino is an excellent training tool for CW. Capacitive touch paddles here are provided, or you can plug in your own paddles. Or straight key. Morse Reno improves your fist by only accepting proper code for the words per minute that you've set in it. Let's start at 20 words per minute. Okay, that worked pretty good. If you push your skill level up too fast, your mistakes are reflected on the display. So let's try it at a slightly faster speed. Let's go to 23 words per minute. Okay, you can see the mistakes. 23 is too fast for me. The Morse Reno is a tough taskmaster. Remember that your fist defines your skill. Make sure that it is a good one. This is November 3, Golf Echo for the Morse Reno 32. The key point I wanted to get across there is it's your fist. It's how you key in there, and the Morse Reno won't accept it unless the spacing and the letters are proper. If you look at my 5NN, the first one there, 5NTE, okay, instead of an N, I had a dot dit, okay, I had too much separation in there. So it does a great job on that. Any questions on that so far? Looking good so far. Okay, let's keep on going, Dan. Okay, um, here's another demo. Morserino 32, 
CW Keir demonstration. Turn the unit on with the red switch. Let the unit boot up. Rotate your black selector knob until you get to CW Keir. Press the black selector knob once. Rotate the selector knob until you get the words per minute that you wish, which in this case we're going to make 15. When complete, turn the switch off and you're, you're finished. Thank you. You're muted, Roger. You got on mute. How about now? You doing fine now. Okay. <laughs> I have trouble with that. Uh, on Sunday mornings, these are some of the things we do. We walk the, the other, especially the new guys, okay? through the process and get them to so that they can use all the functions on the more Serino. Uh, these again, I put up on YouTube, so they're short and sweet. They're not fancy. Let's keep on going here. This is November three golf echo for the more Serino 32. Today, we're going to discuss the Coke trainer designed to allow the individual to train on particular letters and numbers. First, you turn on, the Morserino with the slide switch. Let it boot up. You rotate the black knob until you get to Coke Trainer. There you go. Push the black knob once. It wants you to select your lesson. Push the black knob again. Rotate it till you get to the letter or series of letters that you're looking for. In this case, we'll start with an F. Press the black knob again. Rotate it until you get to learn the new character. Press a paddle. Whoops, made a mistake. When you're finished, press the black knob again. One long turn. You can select a lesson. Go to Echo Trainer and move to various functions. That's the Coke Trainer. Works quite well in 3GE73. Okay, again, very simple, and it looks simple here, but the, the training, especially the Echo Trainer and the Coke Trainer, just drives you nuts. I mean, you get locked into it, and you may be there all day long. Let's keep on rolling here. This is November 3 Golf Echo reporting on the Morserino 32, the decoder function. First off is plug a male to male audio cable from the speaker on your radio into a Milso headset adapter. The, the speaker cable goes into the green connector and the other side of the Milso uh, splitter goes into this input on the Morserino. To get started, we turn the Morserino on. We allow it to boot up. Once she boots up, we press the black knob to get back to the top menu. We rotate the top menu till we get to CW decoder. When you read CW decoder, Press the black knob once. Now you're ready to start copying. How the decoder functions depends on the fist on the other side of the radio waves. And you can make some adjustments by adjusting the audio input, this blue box right here. Works quite well. The Morserino 32 CW 
decoder. Uh, I think where this would, would work out well, and I tried it at field day last summer, is when we have field day at our local club, one of the difficulties we have is only two of us out of the club, and there's only 16 or 18 in the club, we're all retired, who can handle Morse code. And that being the case, we got others sitting around and they just have no idea what we're doing. They're using single sideband and they say, I'd like to do that. So what you do is you set this up to decode for you and they can log for you while you're doing the uh, transmissions back and forth. And it gets them interested and hopefully opens up a door. Any questions yet? Looking good so far. <laughs> okay. Um, I won't go over the, the uh, options there, the low ray, the Wi-Fi, et cetera, because Michael handled that very well. I real emphasize again that the QSO bot that John did for us in England is exceptional. Again, the Morserino will not allow you to cheat, okay? Your, your CQ has to be right, your DE has to be right, your spacing has to be right, or you can't make the QSO. So what you do is you start at a 10 to 12 words per minute, and work your way into it and then a couple of weeks later maybe you're doing 15 or 18 or 20 and it will adjust to the speed that you're sending it um, the other feature he throws in there is after you get a good qso uh, he throws in a number series that where you guess numbers and most of the people i've dealt with with cw think why learn numbers they're easy i mean it's a debt and four da's or it's a da and four dits it's not as easy to send as it is to uh uh learn so um he did a good job let's see what else we got up oh, joe the cat showed up it's my bedtime i can't do any more tonight yeah so that's all we're going to do there's a website michael's going to put some of this on the chat room uh that's the more sereno website that you can go in and you can walk from there if you want to place an order ask a question chase things down there's willie's uh, jay's michael's and my emails if you got a question or if you're interested in the more sereno give us a shout we are not salespeople. like i said i'm a mechanical engineer i can't lie and i can't sell anything that i don't believe in but this more sereno has been exceptional uh there's the groups more sereno groups and there's the two primary clubs that they're connected with that's all i've got folks i'm going to doze off here in about three minutes it's late for me what do you got <laughs> Well, Anthony's got a question. He's got his hand up. Go ahead. You're muted, Anthony. First of I all, knew. the comment. First of all, the comment. Uh, if you're interested in the Long Island CW Club, we had a presentation back in December. So if you go to the list, you can watch the recording and get all the information on that. So definitely take a look at that. It was from uh, the week before Christmas, I think it was. And um, the, the question is, can you do the same decoding on the screen to test your straight key sending if you plug a straight key in? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Okay. The, uh, on your straight key, you can't do uh, decoding with a, your paddles, but you can with your straight key. Okay. Okay. Oscar's got his hand up. Oscar, take it away. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. By the way, it's an excellent presentation and a beautiful kit for learning and probably also for teaching. Uh, my question is that, that you have the paddle already embedded into the uh, into the, your kit. Uh, that is a pressure paddle, how it works. I'm very interested that it's working so well. How does that particular paddles are working? The, the, the unit goes in. There's well, they're capacitive up. touch, right? They're capacitive, the capacitive touch, touch. I think is right here. And I don't know whether you can see the one there or not. Uh, the only difficulty with the capacitive touch, they, they work extremely well. They're very good code-wise, but they have a tendency to fall out. There is one of the guys, Eric, down in Florida that makes a little 3D unit that captures them. Or what some of us has done is taken a little piece of foam and you stick a little piece of foam in there and they don't go any place. But as far as keying, they yeah i got a begali paddle okay and they work almost as good as my begali except for they're small okay so the answer was is that is a capacitor touch so that was yes. the question i think there's no mechanical uh, uh movement is uh by capacitance and fingers mm -hmm. correct 
Thank you, guys. Excellent presentation. It really is. Yeah, it's. Um, I, I guess uh, you can see that all of us have are pretty passionate about it. Um, I mean, I I feel very really lucky that it came out really just as I was getting going with CW. It it helped me in anything that I wanted to do. It, it's helped me in uh, trying to get into some contesting. It was a big stepping stone for me to be able to, to get into the um, CW Ops, CWTs weekly. I went from, you know, a field day uh, uh, when I was just barely starting and trying to teach myself to doing like maybe seven, <laughs> one, one QSO an hour, and they were probably all botched. And, you know, a few years later, you know, I, I did over 700 contacts. And a large part of that is that echo trainer, um, uh, as he said, that is a real taskmaster. So it's a great device. Okay, very good. Yeah, I have a question. Did well, somebody yeah. say you can only use a straight key with it uh, as an uh, as a uh, outside key? No, you can use a uh, a paddle, and and it will it does decode what you're sending. I mean, if you've got it in um, CW keyer mode, it shows you what you're sending, uh, but you can plug in your paddle and even a single lever. Thank you. And that reminds me, you can actually plug it in with a serial cable, a USB cable to your computer and use your computer screen as a, like a larger um, screen instead of the tiny one, if that makes it easier for you. I mean, there's so many functions. I, I bet you that some of those just went right, flew right over some of you. I mean, um, you can plug this into your, your transceiver and it can be decoding what you're getting out of your transceiver and you can be sending it using it as your keyer if you wanted to your to your radio. So it can be done that way as well. There are two, two, two things I was interested in. I, I, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it will work as an interface for G4 FLN on, on your PC. I, I, I think you may be able to use it to, to send through G4 FLN. And then there's oh. also a. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and, and there's also a um, an iPad um, interface USB to um, um, arcade adapter, I think, right? That you can um, you can hook it into and then use it for Morset for the Morset app on the iPhone or the iPad. Oh, really? That'd be interesting. Um, uh, where do you get that uh, adapter? Uh, it's on the more so M O R S E dash I T. Um, if you mm -hmm. look at their webpage, they have a um, uh, an, an adapter, and that would go through the, I believe it is, it's the cure output of the Morse of the Morse Arena into the into that. But I I, yes. I saw someone, and I haven't haven't done it yet, but I, I saw someone hook it to a PC and then use it through G4 FON on I, I think on YouTube or something. But right. I, I was wondering mm -hmm. if any guys have, have tried that yet. So uh, I don't know if I have G4FON up and running right now, but absolutely you can do it. Essentially, all it's doing is using the um, side tone from the Morserino output, and it's going into the speaker uh, into your, or into the microphone in your computer to use it for the G4FON sending trainer. So really, you can use anything, any other side tone uh, or CPO, a code practice oscillator uh, to do that. You can um, do... Uh, the more Serena will work for that as well. Very good, very good. There was a question in the chat that just flew up. Uh, I'm on my iPhone, so maybe somebody yeah, else can feel I'll, that, but it looked I'll, like he wants you to repeat that, Patrick. I'll put the um, link, I have the link right here. I'll put it in the chat. Um. Uh, Patrick brings up a very good point. Another place you can use a more Serena works well. If anybody has done ham radio, solutions which is a little dongle that you can go in and you can you know, communicate through their program uh there's a way to take the morserino and use it to drive the dongle and it really improves the operation yeah i i used it on the plane um over christmas flying <laughs> uh flying uh, cross country and, and Getting it through customs was a little weird, or I mean, through uh, security was a little weird. But after that, just stack on my lap and put the um, headphones on, and you know, and it, using the, the, the tip pass of the paddles, it was great. 
good, good way to kill three hours. <laughs> Are there any more uh, questions out there in text or I don't see more hands up. This was really a great presentation. Thank you guys. Okay, Barry, get your hand up. No, you get your thumb up. <laughs> it's hard sometimes to see if that's a thumb or a hand. <laughs> okay, um, again, any of the presentations you can send to me, appreciate it, like to get them included. Uh, you had a sheet with a lot of uh, um, um, links in it. I like to especially get that. I'll probably convert to PDF and make that available on the link on the thing as well. And if there's anything else. Dan? Anthony had his hand up, but he took it down. Oh, well, well Anthony. Well, I, I'll go ahead and talk anyway. I put a link in there for one of the V-Band interfaces. And I put the link directly to the V-Band website. Very good. So the V-Band interface, um, what their dongle is, it basically turns your uh, paddle or key into a uh, two keyboard um, or two key keyboard. So the V-Band website, for those of you who haven't seen it, it um, can take uh, the control keys or the bracket keys on your keyboard and use one for dits and one for DAS. So uh, by using that little, um, uh, their little uh, USB device, it'll turn your DA or your right side uh, paddle to one control key and the left side paddle to the other control key. And that's uh, how they, you can use it on their website. Okay, very good information. And Diane has her hand up. Yeah, hi Diane, come on in. All right, um, I was wondering if you guys could show me, I have a V-band, you know, the the little thing. So can you show me real quick where it would fit into the Monserino? Uh, Diane, you know? uh, is your email address correct at, uh, on QRZ? Yeah, it should be. Okay, uh, we'll tell you what, to make sure it works, send me an email at QR, on QRZ, go up to N3GE, okay. and I'll send you a white paper that shows where everything goes. Oh, great, and I'm also a LICW member, so. Um, it's on Morris could... 19, Morris great. Arena 19. Thank you. Um, just to walk you through it real quick, though, if you're looking at your Morse Reno, the jack on the far left has a little radio icon in the acrylic, and you would plug uh, an I.O. cable uh, into there, and then you plug the other end of that into the V-band dongle. And then in the V-band website, you just select straight key, and uh, it should work just that simple. Okay, great. Can you do me a quick favor and hold up uh, oh, sure. Reno and just point to point to what you just told me? So this one here with the little radio icon on the far uh -huh. left, uh, you plug uh, I.O. cable into there. It's just a tip ring sleeve uh, cable, and you plug that into the uh, V-band dongle. Oh, okay. Well, that's easy. Okay, thank you. thank you. Anthony, you got your hand up again. Yes, I, I just want to remind everyone as we're getting to the end, I put the links in again. So if you joined us a little later, there's a link for all to access all the Rat Pack sessions. There's over 160 of them available and also the Rat Pack website link. And we'd like you to also please share these with any of your friends, fellow club members, et cetera, any mailing list you're on uh, so we can get uh, a good turnout on Wednesdays and Thursday nights. Uh, there's a question about the G4 FON software, if someone would like to cover that. Just a general description of it. Uh -oh. Sure. Um, G4 FON was a ham um, who uh, created a really great training software uh, for uh, Koch uh, Coke uh, learning process where it will play uh, random letters or words or QSO type text at whatever speed you would like with whatever Farnsworth uh, spacing between the letters you would like. And a lot of people like to use it for um, just practicing their copying skills. It also has a sending trainer where it will do kind of like the echo trainer on the Morserino where it'll give you a word and you send it back uh, to the program. Uh, so it's uh, a lot of people use it. Unfortunately, uh, he passed away uh, this past year, 
but his software is still out there for people to download. He was uh, also inspired by a young American ham, I think in Michigan, to uh, do a contest trainer. Do you know anything about that? Is that still, is <laughs> uh, that still a- available? Uh, yeah, so he has a second program uh, to practice contests, specifically um, field day, uh, sweepstakes, the CWTs, and SKCC exchanges. Um, the, the software is still on his website, but you'll need an authentication file, which they're not making anymore, but we have access to some that were made previously uh, before he passed, so we can also try and distribute those to those who might want it. Okay, Someone but... wants to know where you can get a drop-in case. Go ahead, Roger. Yeah, they're made by Eric down in Florida. Once again, if you send me an email, and if my email's good under QRZ under N3GE, and mention that you're looking for a case, I will send it to Eric. Now, he's still in the design phase. I've got one of his prototypes. I don't have it in front of me to show you, but uh, he's working it up now uh, for 3D printing. So if you send me an email, I will make sure it gets down to Eric and put the two of you in touch. So where do you buy these things? Uh, Eric, one of our uh, Long Island CW club members, has his son-in-law print these things for him. But he's been doing, he, he did the design, uh, working with Willie, okay, and he's been making some modifications. He's still at the prototype stage. Okay, I've got one and it's pretty good. I only had to drill out one hole just a little bit. And uh, he did a good job. So I will, if you send me an email, I will forward to Eric, okay, and put the two of you in touch. Okay. And I see Anthony put the three the three D uh, printer file out there also on the chat. Okay, we're we're look like we're going to wrap this thing up an hour, which is really great. That's our normal goal. Or once while we go short, or once while we go long, to hit it right on the button is is unusual. Are there any more questions? I don't see any hands. Barry, what's it look like in chat? We're good. Okay, any comments out there? Thank you very much. Yes, ditto for myself, and I'm sure that uh, most of us out here, we're not here. When you see the people come to these presentations, you know they have an interest in this. So, And they'll be, you know, we've seen uh, through YouTube and various other sources for some time yet to come. Okay. Uh, Dan? Yes, sir. If, if they wouldn't mind, if there's any of the, any of the Long Island CW group uh, members that joined us tonight because of, they saw this announcement, could you raise your hand just so we get an idea of that you, where you're, that you're from there? Oh, good. If you, uh, you can use the raise your hand icon if you're not using your camera right now. Well, that's a good turnout. Yeah, it is. It is. It really is. Wow. Yeah. I like that. That means we're going to have a lot of new CW ops yeah. or, so. or hopefully very vastly improved. Yeah. And just a reminder for any of you that are not in the group, with the, if you go back to the uh, Rad Pack presentations uh, on the list there, you'll see the one from the Long Island CW group to find out more about this ru- really good group. And they're not just the CW learning, that they're, they're all sorts of learning about all aspects of amateur radio. So take a look at their uh, presentation they did a couple of weeks ago. Okay, it was a, a, this has been a great presentation as well. The two match up very nicely. <laughs> okay, uh, I got three hands up. Is that from Boldy while ago or somebody got a question? They're probably from the previous uh, question. I think so. Roger, you got your, your look like you're clapping. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Tom, you got your hand up. Nope, went away. All right. Uh, give a little shout out there. Any more questions, comments, whatever? Nothing heard, nothing seen. Ladies and gentlemen, I think at this point we're going to pull the plug for the night and get ready for tomorrow and hope to see you then as well. 73s to everybody. It's been a pleasure and a very good presentation. Everybody. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of fun. My pleasure. Thank you all. 
Hey, Dan, if you could give me a quick phone call, I want to take care of that issue you had. Okay.